What's up, everybody? Uh, Brian here. Welcome to our weekly live show, Shop Talk, where we teach you one practical thing you can do to grow your business. Uh, so by the way, if, if you're here early on and you want slides or replays or any of the bunch of resources that we mentioned, uh, we have a VIP list, a text list. That There was a slide up for that right before we jumped on, uh, which, by the way, my music stopped like 45 seconds short, so we're going to fix that for next time. Uh, but uh, we'll th show the slide back up a few times I threw out, and Ben will throw that in comments. We'll introduce Ben here just in a second. But if you want the replay, if you want resources, if you want slides, uh, we do send those out after the fact. So if you have to leave early or you get here late, uh, we got you back. Don't worry. Uh, so I'm your host for Shop Talk. My name is Brian Harris. I'm the founder of Growth Tools, and I'm a marketing coach and run a marketing coaching business where we help online entrepreneurs and established businesses uh, make it almost impossible to fail at growing their business. Our job is to get in the muscle fibers of your business, understand exactly what it is that uh, you do and how you do it, and make it almost impossible to fail for your business to grow. Give you strategies, give you tips, give you tricks, and give you a custom-made plan to make that really simple. And my two sidekicks with me today uh, are Mr. Ben Dahl. I like to call him Lord Dahl. There's a long story behind that. Maybe Ben can share it one day. He's coming to us, hailing from Idaho. Ben, how are you today? Hey, Brian. Good to be here. Doing well. Uh, I think I dressed up as a pirate on Zoom, and I think that became the Pirate Lord uh, Dahl character so i'm totally changing the words here on the slide to lord Dell, by the way so uh you know i see your idaho <laughs> internet still sucks so glad you're with us from the bottom of the fishbowl today uh mr will DeShazo coming to us live from birmingham alabama uh the chef extraordinaire filmed a video uh highlighting all the sales wins for quarter one all while making ravioli from scratch which was completely impressive so mr will how you doing today Good, man. Today for lunch, I also had a smoked duck pastrami sandwich with sauerkraut. Because why not, right? I mean, of course you did. And you made that in the 10 <laughs> minutes right before you got off and, uh, and ate it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. Also with us today, we have, uh, well, laid out super weirdly on the screen. Let's see if we can fix that. There we go. We have our clients, uh, several of our clients joined us today. We're going to try We're going to try a new feature. We've actually tried it three or four times in a row and haven't been able to make it work. But I think we might have it working today. Uh, Miss Jeanette, who is our director of product, is in the upper left-hand corner, and several of our clients are joining us today. As we kind of go through the teaching, we'll pipe them in several times to kind of get their thoughts and opinions and maybe workshop some stuff with us. Also, there's a good chance some tech will break uh, while trying to bring them in because it's kind of complicated to stream Zoom while on YouTube through another piece of software. So, uh, Jeanette, thanks for being here. What's going on over there with clients today? Great. Yeah, thanks so much. We are excited to be here. People are just now getting in and um, getting into Zoom, so I'm just getting them all warmed up. They're doing well. We were chatting before you uh, came over. So I like your so I like your outdoor setting today. Looks like you're outside. Uh, in Michigan, when it gets warm, you just have to eat it up because it it'll be gone. The Arctic tundra has gone. escaped, and now we're into springtime. So <laughs> glad you're there. Miss Bethany's with us as well. Miss Heather is with us to, uh, as well. I don't see any other coaches with us, but thanks everybody for being here. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll come back to y'all here in a minute. Uh, so like I said earlier, our goal on Shop Talk is to give you just one practical thing you can do in this hour that you can use to grow your business, something you could implement immediately. Uh, and something we go into a good bit of detail on exactly how to do. You can take this, execute exactly what we talk about, and your business will grow as a result. Now, I will say, I'm knocking off a little rust. I've been, I was out for the entire month of April. I took a sabbatical fairly last minute, which is a longer story maybe we'll share at some point. Uh, but it was fantastic. It was really, really good. Uh, and this is the first like thing I've done since I've been back. <laughs> so I uh, pretty much spent a day trying to figure out how my computer works and how to teach things, uh, but got some fun curriculum lined up that I haven't taught or talked about in a really long time. Uh, it's one of the very first mm, marketing strategies that wasn't really popular. It, it's been used for a very long time, but something that hasn't, still isn't super popular in the online teaching space. And I'm excited to teach y'all uh, that today. So thanks for being here. Looking forward to hanging out. Uh, let's jump over to slides here if I can get my computer to work. Uh, last time, so it's actually been about six weeks since we've had a shop talk and I, we committed in quarter one to have them every week and we almost hit that, although we missed a few and then I was out for the month of April. But there was a few comments on under the YouTube video, which by the way, leave us a comment in the live chat or if you're watching this in replay below it, would love to know one practical thing, one aha moment that you had from watching this training today. Uh, from the last shop talk we had, Eduardo said, uh, with what you told me a little in a little effort, I have 185 people who... Uh, they reached my post for the call and 343 comments that keep coming in. This is from one of our recent trainings. And then another one uh, from Courtney Elmer, who's a, a client of ours, hired us six months ago. She said, executing the price increase campaign, which is something we, talk, we taught on Shop Talk a few weeks back, 
uh, led to four new clients, uh, getting them off the fence and generating $4,000 in revenue. So I want to know, I don't want to just teach you things and you get really cool ideas and you do nothing, you do nothing with it. Like I want to know your aha moment. And then when you get results, leave them in a comment, send them to me in an email, Brian at Growth Tools would love to learn exactly what you love, um, what struck you as very interesting, and then what you actually did with it. So coming up in just a few minutes, we're gonna jump into the details of today's training, how to increase sales 23% with one simple psychology trick. This is one of the first things we do for clients that have an existing product that they're selling. We audit for this, we make sure they're doing this. If they're not, it's one of the first things, if not the very first thing we have them do. I'm gonna walk you through examples, walk you through results, and walk you through how I've used this over the years. Before we do that, um, I wanna share one thing. So Ben, that we showed a while ago, let me bring Ben back up. Everybody say hi to Ben, Ben. Ben's our director of marketing. Uh, ben found a really cool marketing trick. Uh, he's in charge of our ad funnel. He runs our Facebook ads and the funnel attached to that. And he found a really cool marketing hack the other day and recorded a quick video because his internet in Idaho suck. You never know when it'll just drop out. Uh, so I have him send that to me. I'm gonna play that for you right now. Pay attention to this, this is really cool. Usually each week before the training, by the way, we share like a test that we've done recently or a cool thing that we found. So this week we're gonna share a cool thing that we found. And let me load it up right now for you. Mr. All right, hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get more leverage out of a winning ad in Facebook. And the number one way that we've started doing this is by not creating a new ad where, you know where it says in Facebook, if you create the ad, the engagement won't carry over, or if you tweak something, then the engagement won't carry over. Instead of creating new ads, you wanna build your ads off of a post ID and carry the post ID forward into different tests or different ad sets or whatever, however you your media buying methodology is, um, however you run that. But the reason that this is helpful is because the engagement does carry over. You have an ad that's already warmed up. You can put testimonials and proof in the comments and uh, that will also carry over. So there's additional proof below the ad when people go to investigate and see what the feedback is. And it's really actually very simple. Uh, the way that you do that is you can come into any ad. These are ads that are uh, a new test um, for us. So if we wanted to duplicate these and put these into another audience, for example, then I would hit preview, share, uh, send post, uh, see Facebook post with comments. That's going to take me into my uh, Facebook account. Give it a second here to load. There it is. So it's stressed out by inconsistent revenue. So this is uh, the the ad and you can see that the comments are already down here below with some of the emoji reactions and all that. Um, the way that you carry this forward is uh, the after you see backslash post, this is the post ID right here. So you would grab this number, copy that. And then if you wanted to create another ad, instead of like creating a brand new ad when you are in here, do, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I'm just gonna name this demo, continue. So you can pretend like we're putting this in a new audience, for example, that we want to test. We want to test the same ad to a different audience. Then I'm going to come in here and instead of hitting create ad, you want to use an existing post. And then you come down here and this little blue text would be enter post ID. Enter that, hit submit. There you go. Uh, and then you're using the same ad. You can still, I think, have to update the uh, URL tracking preferences there. Um, and it looks like you still got to add the URL parameters. Um, but then all the comments and proof will carry over. And that should help uh, get you better results from your ad. So let me know if you have any questions. You can drop them in the chat. I'll answer them as we go. And uh, But hope this helps and hope this piques some ideas for you. So Ben, I uh, found the right slide for you there. Uh, so let me say back to you what I think I just watched because I'm not like super in the weeds of Facebook. Uh, the the hack was taking the same post on Facebook and using it in multiple ads by copying over the post ID. So you can carry all the social proof if you run it in different ads. Is that right? Right, yeah. And why- So like, you see it a lot. Of, oh, good, good. Yeah, well, one of the examples is you have an ad that's totally winning instead of having to like it create Facebook will create a new object on its back end, right? And it has to rewarm it up and reintroduce it to the algorithm. Instead of doing all that stuff, you can have hundreds of post reactions, which takes a little bit of time to get. 
you can have comments and you can post uh, your case studies and upload your uh, video testimonials in the comments, which adds proof instead of there being, because you're always going to have kind of spammy comments for the most part, um, or just questions. What you want people to see first are your results that back up what they just read in the ad. So all that improves your, I, I can't put a number on it exactly, but it's actually pretty fast. And what we've started doing is building all our ads out first in a staging campaign and then using those post IDs uh, so that any ad that has legs just keeps building on itself instead of constantly restarting. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Thanks for sharing, man. Uh, would love to know anybody that's watching that's currently running ads that is doing that or isn't doing that. And we'll maybe cut this out as a clip for people specifically running ads right now. If you're not running ads, like just stick this in the back of your head as a thing you can do and come back to this recording later on. Uh, if you are and you aren't doing that, like you should definitely consider that and you can reach out or leave a comment in chat. Ben can help you with that uh, if that uh, seems to make sense for where you're at. Uh, okay, so let's jump into uh, training today. So today I'm going to teach you one um, strategy you can use to increase your, we increase sales by, I think, I think the math, I actually didn't double check the math. It's around 23%, maybe just a little bit more uh, with one little trick. So if you haven't already, if you're not on the Growth Tools VIP list, uh, just text VIP to 615-903-8108. And then uh, tomorrow morning, Ben will actually take this recording and a bunch of the resources and examples we mentioned and some, some checklists and things we'll give you throughout and just text it out to you so you have it. Um, that way you don't have to remember to come back to the recording or uh, whatnot. So anyway, make sure you're on the SMS list. If you're already on the SMS list, you don't have to opt in again. We'll send it to you. Uh, and you would have known that because you would get a text about 15 minutes before we went live. Uh, to make sure you didn't miss. All right, before we get into the training, I want to just give you kind of a high level. We, we very rarely talk about this, but I figure it might be helpful for knowing the frame of how I'm teaching today. This is how my company works. This is how Growth Tools works. There, our, our flywheel that makes the business run has four components. The very first thing is we solve our own problems. So we want to increase sales. We have a sales goal. So we try to do more of what's working and discover more things we could do, where by doing them, the business grows. So once we discover things, once we solve our own marketing problems, we then codify those things and do step number two here, which is give our solutions to our clients. So we take the best plays that we discover, like the one I'm going to teach you today, and then we give them to our clients. And we also sometimes teach them publicly and whatnot, but we give our clients like the super detailed playbook and coach them through execution and everything. As a result of giving them things that work, then they don't have to figure it out themselves and learn it the hard way. Their business grows. So we solve our own marketing and sales problems. We get the best solutions to clients and their business grows. And as a result, number four happens, which is they tell their friends who hire us as well. Our business grows. We continually have problems to solve. We solve them. We give our solutions to clients. Their business grows as a result. They tell their friends we're able to increase price and continue the flywheel around. So that's how literally teaching the strategies we're doing is the very first step of how the business runs. Because that means we have to have found one. We then teach you how to do them. Your business grows. You tell your friends about us. Our audience grows. More people buy. And the whole world gets happy uh, and everything's as a result of that. So uh, just so you have a frame of why we teach this stuff. Because we're going to go into a pretty good, a, good, a pretty good bit of detail today. I want to make sure you understand why we're doing that. So uh, in chat right now, I want to know, what is your confidence level? that the pricing of your product or service is correct. So maybe one is no confidence, or maybe zero is no confidence. <laughs> and 10 is, it is perfect. I've split tested for 17 years and it is exactly where it should be. So scale of zero to 10, how confident are you that the price of your product and service is correct? Meaning you're not leaving too much meat on the bone, meaning that it isn't so high priced that nobody's actually buying, meaning that you found like the perfect sweet spot, just like uh, baseball. When you hit when you hit the ball at the sweet spot in the bat, like that's when you get a home run. So how confident are you that your price is in the sweet spot? I want to know. Uh, so I actually need to bring up comments. I don't have comments up right now. There we go. All right. Five. Brett said seven, six, five. Laura said five. Good. So Maybe right in the middle-ish, not extremely confident, but also don't feel like you're totally lost. So Matt said three. So today I'm going to give you a strategy where by doing it, uh, you will have your product perfectly priced, meaning you aren't driving away because you're too many people because your price is too high and you aren't leaving so much meat on the bone because your price is too low. You'll be perfectly positioned price-wise. Uh, Jason, seven to eight. Amy, about 60%. Karen, uh, six. Karen or uh, Carolyn from Washington, D.C. What's up, Carolyn? Uh, so let, let me give you kind of the, the punchline first. The very first time I did this was the first product launch I ever did in 2015 was for an online course. And this specific strategy, I'm going to walk you through the whole thing right now, uh, the example of it, generated an additional 
$56,500 in revenue from doing this one thing that took about 30 minutes, the whole thing. This is why, this is one of the highest leverage, quick optimization things you can do in a company because, well, you'll see why in a second. So let me walk you through the story of this. So it is two days before I'm gonna launch my very first online course. This course was called Get 10,000 Subscribers. We actually did a Black Friday sale on it last Black Friday. It's the first time we've sold it in years. Um, and I'm getting ready to launch it. And this is the package here. You can literally, this is a screenshot from the sales page of the package that I was selling. Eight payments in 97. I think that adds up to $700. Well, if you paid in full and 875 or something, if you're paying in payment plans. So just keep you know, the, the price point in your mind. $600. $600 is the, is the pay in full price with the payment plan that is a little bit more. You got the course. You get access to the community. You got the Q&A calls, advanced training, case studies, unlimited consulting with me, 15-minute strategy session, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that calls $600. The two days before the call, I have a, I have a call a, a friend that knew I was about to launch and we got on the phone and I walked him. He's like, all right, what's your offer? And I walked him through it. He was like, ooh, you need to do one thing. Um, well, let me show you. If I would have launched with just this, this is what would have happened. We know because we had 234 people enroll in the product, buy the product, 234 people bought it. If the only price I charged was $600, we would have generated $140,400 because that's the only thing to buy. 234 people buying a $600 product is 140 grand. And we had 234 people buy that very first launch. My buddy Jeff advised, he's like, don't, don't put everything in one package. Instead of doing that, create two packages. And you don't have to create anything new in order to create your second package. In fact, all you do is delete a few things out of your the main package you're going to have. You can see on the screen here where I just some of the items are crossed out and just move them over to your higher end package. So I had that starter package with $600 still. We just removed some things from it. Now we hadn't sold it yet. Nobody's ever seen the offer before. This is only like what I'd conceived into Google Doc and put into a sales page. So the two days before is two days before. I just moved a few items out of the $600 package and created a brand new package for $1,200. And instead of having one little table on the sales page, there was two tables on the sales page. Nothing new in the product. Product's identical. <laughs> I just moved some out of the $600 product and stuck it in the $1,200 product. Is that making sense? Yeah. This is what happened. 234 people bought, but instead of 100% of them buying the $600 package, 60% of people bought it. And 40% of people bought the $1,200 package. So instead of selling 140 grand, we sold $196,000, $56,500 difference simply by giving them a way to pay more money. If we'd have only had the one data on the one package, everyone would have bought the one package because that's the only thing you could actually buy. But instead of doing that, I gave people a way to pay more money, double the money for the thing I was gonna sell for $600. Now, what's the worst case scenario here? Everybody buys the $600 package, all 234 people buy the $600 package and we make 140 grand, which is still great. I mean, I, that would have blown my expectations out of the water of that first launch ever. Still would have been super happy. I would have not even have known there was an additional $56,000 of meat left on the bone. But two days before, somebody who had launched stuff before and knew some of the tips and tricks said, hey, just duplicate your little table, move a handful of things over and give people a way to pay more money. And we did that, and as a result, generated $56,000 in sales. Uh, here's the uh, little tiered price. Uh, we call this tiered pricing, by the way. And what tiered pi pricing is, is allowing people to pay you more money by giving them more value. Instead of just having one package, instead of just having one course they can buy, take the same one course, but allow them to pay more money for it. Have a $500 package, a $1,000 package, and a $2,000 package. And I'll walk you through the details of how to figure out your pricing and what needs to be in them and all that all throughout this workshop here. One of the biggest ahas I've ever had, one of the simplest things I've ever done. In fact, I didn't prep this, but uh, one of my buddies, Brian Dean, who actually recently sold his company, uh, Backlinko, who's one of the top SEO blogs on the internet. Um, in the first three years of him selling that course, I found, I discovered the strategy. And I was like, dude, you got to do tiered pricing. And he only had the course, I think it was $1,000 at the time. On his next launch, he just moved a handful of things from the $1,000 package, put them in the $2,000 package and generated a million dollars in revenue from that second package being added. It took him 30 minutes. That was it. That's the whole strategy. Simply give people a way to pay more money by creating a second package. So this concept is called tiered pricing. And I'll show you some examples that will ring true because you've seen this around in different places. It's more rare to find it with people that sell information, 
or people that sell services. It's very common to find it in software. In fact, almost all of you probably subscribe currently to a software service of some sort that has tiered pricing. But before I give you examples, let me walk you through like a very simple version of this uh, where you can kind of understand the concept at a root level. So imagine uh, that you just wrote a book and you're gonna sell the book for $10. And day one, you're like, all right, my book's done. I need to go sell the book. Let me go talk to everybody I know. And then at the end of the day, you've sold your $10 book. You've sold 10 copies of your $10 book. You've made $100. Decent day. First, first day, you've got 10 copies. Um, what if instead of just having one package, and your package when selling a book is just, I mean, you, you're selling a book. So you sell the book for the price of the book, right? That's how everybody thinks about it. But what if you applied the tiered pricing concept to a book? What if instead of just selling the book for $10, what if you had some super cool version of the book that costs $50? And you say, $50 for a book, like that's insane. Is it insane? I'm showing you some examples here in a minute. It's not insane at all. I've bought $200 books before, but they're not sold as a book. I get the book, but what if the super cool version of the book, what if it had the audio book version included as well? What if it had access to like a cool members community? What if it had ex uh, access to cool case studies and examples of the things being done in the book where I could learn from them? And you packaged it up. Instead of just $10 for a book that I could go buy on Amazon, I'm getting the super cool version of the book that costs $50. Actually, I bought, I wish I wish I'd have got it. I could run out my hallway. Um, I bought a, a, Seth Godin has done this several times on Kickstarter where he sells these big $250 version of these books. And these book, he actually just makes the book itself and doesn't add stuff to it. Uh, but they're huge. I mean, the, the book weighs 25 pounds and is like the size of my torso. It is huge. Uh, so most people think when they're selling a book, and this is just by way of an example, this applies to books, courses, anything. You sell your book for 10 bucks. You sell 10 copies, you make $100. Or still selling 10 copies, you give people a way to pay more money, to get more value. Because a giant chunk of people, 40% of people typically, will pay way more money if you simply give them more value for it. So in the book example, we're going to give them a members community, some case studies, some examples, some templates, an audio book version. Those things are easy to make. And you've taken your revenue from $100 for the exact same effort, exact same time, exact same number of units sold, and you've increased it by 2.6x. Simply by making a slightly cooler version of the product and giving your best people a way to pay more money. Now, let's take it up one more notch. What if we gave people, what if we made the extremely cool, super cool version of the thing? <laughs> so instead of just having the book and the audio book and the community and the examples and case studies that you charge $50 for, what if you sell the same 10 copies, but for one person, you tell everybody you sell the 10 copies of the book to, for one person, I'm going to spend an entire day with you and we're going to do the book. We're going to take the things in the book and apply them to your life, to your business, to your marriage, to your parenting, whatever the topic of the book is. And one person pays you $1,000 to spend a day with them and then coach them over Voxer or email for the next 90 days. One of those 10 people to buy that. And you've now gone from the same, only, you only got 10 clients. You got no, this, you've not increased your number of new clients. You've simply given people a way to pay more money and you've increased your revenue from $100 to $1,210 with the same number of units sold simply by adding tiered pricing in. Uh, let me stop for a minute. Ben and Will. How are we tracking? How are we looking? Is this making sense? I'm going to go to some examples in real life here in a second and walk through and then show how to do it. How's that hitting y'all? Yeah, I like that a lot. And I know I've picked up from Dan Kennedy. Uh, I think this is in one of Russell's books. He's like, just don't stop making people offers. Like always give people a way to uh, like ascend to the next level. Um, and I also, this also rings true in affiliate offers. You know, when you're and this is maybe not totally the same thing, but a lot of what people do is just add on extra stuff to make their thing the most compelling version of what's out there. So it's how you stand out too in a competitive marketplace. There was I actually tried to find the quote that I didn't underline when I was reading this book. This is one of my favorite books, 8020 Sales and Marketing by Perry Marshall. It is fantastic. I might just be making up this quote because I couldn't find it and I didn't spend all the time today to reread the entire book to find it. But he has a quote, something like, um, never let people run out of ways to pay you money. And um, the concept was, and he illustrates it brilliantly in the book. It's much more well, much better articulated than I've done here. Uh, an example of how they just keep inventing offers for people. People can't run out of things to buy. They just keep making them up for things for them to buy, which is a really interesting concept. And there's lots of maybe things we'll talk about throughout uh, where people do this. Like you can find this in football stadiums. I think Perry did this. This is the first thing that made this click for me. Walk into a football stadium. You can watch the game. You can watch the game on 
on your TV for free. Or you can pay $80 to sit in the nosebleeds, or you can pay $500 to sit on the 50 yard line 20 rows up, or you can pay $50,000 to sit in the 50 yard line box with the owner or the president of the school. Same game, same exact game. All you've, all you've done is add more value to it and increase your average ticket rate. In fact, he broke down the math in stadiums of general admission revenue versus box seat and premium revenue. Box seat and premium revenue doubles the gate at a game. With like, I don't know, I think I, I put this in Auburn football terms, which I'm an Auburn fan. Uh, and there's something like 87,000 seats in a stadium, but half the revenue comes from 150 seats. That's wild. Like 87,000 seats sell less than a, the other 150 seats. And it's not really about the 87,000. It's about they uh, they found a way to add more value. Where about doing it? People pay more money. Uh, so thinking about this in your business, really key. Let me switch back over here and run through a few practical examples. The first one I wanted to show was a SaaS company. What is this? Pop? I forget the name. I think this is Pop-Up Domination is the name of the company. Uh, and you see this, uh, you see this in SaaS all the time. And a lot of times SaaS companies, software companies, build this off volume. Uh, and for, for people that are teaching courses, course creators or membership sites or uh, coaches, this, is, this concept doesn't really exist for us. It's not a thing you can do off, off usage. Uh, so you see for them, the number of views of the pop-up uh, dictates your price. Uh, but you can see this is a concept that exists that you probably have seen on a thousand pricing pages where you have, oh, there's these three, there's a table with like three different things I could buy. Not super applicable to coaches and course creators, but that's a thing that exists. And, and the more you use it, the more you pay for it. Uh, now let's go to an example. This is from uh, Gina Horky, who is a former client of ours. She runs, this is a course she had called 30 Days or Less to Freelance Writing Success. Just three different versions, three different packages. She has the starter package, the growth package, and the rock star package. She's named them $100, $200, and $400. And you can see in the $100 version, a lot of stuff grayed out. The $200 version, some of the big personalized stuff grayed out. And in the $400 version, you can see you get everything. You have the complete package there. So that's an example for a course creator. Here's an example. One of the first examples I ever saw of this. And I, well, I didn't buy this product, actually, because it didn't make sense for me. But two of the products I bought from him that had this... Uh, this package concept. And this is Nathan Barry, who now runs a company called ConvertKit that's done wildly well. This is before he did ConvertKit. He wrote several books, sold them. You can see the price at the top is $39. Then he has a $79 version, then a $169 version of a book, which seems crazy. But if you go to read the things you get in the book, let me read them to you and just see how this hits you. Just put yourself in the shoes of a potential customer. You're going to buy this thing. A 125 page PDF ebook, two case studies, Button design, codes and templates, case study Photoshop files, wireframe apps in Photoshop, eight tutorial videos, and then my screenshot cuts off. I can't see what that's, what's at the bottom. But you get all the cool stuff for $169. So that's an example of a book doing this. One more example. This is from uh, a guy named Vern Harnish, I think is how you say his name. He wrote a very popular book called Scaling Up, but he has a course for it as well. Now you can buy the book on Amazon for $29 or $39, or you can pay $9.97 for a self-paced course or you can pay $2,000 for the coached version of the course, like kind of done with you, or you can hire him to implement this in your business for $20,000. Talking about tiered pricing, $1,000, $2,000, $20,000, all shown on the same screen. And now the great thing I love about the $20,000 deal, he probably sells very few from this page, but it does an amazing job at anchoring the price of everything else. It makes, if I'm, and actually I would tend to flip it and put the $20,000 on the far left. So people would see that number first. And as they work down the page, they get to the cheaper stuff. Then it makes the 997 price point look low compared to what it is for Vern to come into your business and do it. And it almost feels like a deal. Uh, even if you know what's going on, it still works uh, really well. So let's go into how to do this. Is this may, let me pause for a second. Uh, let's kick over uh, to Jeanette with our coaching clients. Jeanette, how's this hitting us over there? Any questions that have popped up for clients as we kind of gave examples of this? Yeah, we're starting to brainstorm over here. Cassidy was like, wow, my ideas are flowing and already changing the way I tell coaching just from the beginning of this call. Yeah. Um, so and we're brainstorming with some of the other clients as well. So we've got John, he's like, just wondering, he's like, I see how it could work with my group coaching, but not maybe the individual coaching. So we're really starting to get some good ideas flowing over here. Let me give an example of this in coaching real quick. Uh, I don't think I showed an example in coaching. We actually do this ourselves, but we don't have a page to show it. So I didn't have a thing to screenshot. Um, but our typical coaching costs a thousand dollars a month and has a setup fee associated with it. Uh, we also sell, uh, up to max of one a month working with me directly, meaning you come into Nashville, we spend the day together and then we do some Voxer stuff after the fact, kind of in a reactive type of manner. 
that product isn't a thousand dollars a month. It's fifty thousand uh, dollars. But we sell one every other month, one a month, one every other month or so. But it's a dra- it, it's very similar. If you like, if you were to lay out the bullet points, it's almost identical except for a handful of things. You spend a day with me versus making your plan and going through everything asynchronously with a coach. Now, there's some aspects that are better with me. Honestly, if you were to put everything on the table for a lot of people, it's better doing the asynchronous version that we have. But in some scenarios, it makes sense. Like if you're above $500,000 a year, a lot of times there's value uh, from that. So we do this in coaching. We have two different versions. We don't really even talk about the other one because we don't take much volume in it at all. And it's only for people kind of past a certain stage. And honestly, them and I get along really, really well because you don't want to like hang out a day, you or me with somebody that you're, like, you're just not in sync with well. Uh, so we do that. We have a $1,000 version and a $50,000 version. And it works fantastic. We actually did a workshop on this uh, probably it was early March uh, on how to sell the $25,000 $25, coaching package. And we walked through the details of like that offer and how it works and how to match it up with a lower ticket. So if you if you do one-on-one coaching and group coaching, that's just two different tiers of the same product, really. You might think about it as two separate products, but you could easily tear it up on a pricing page where it looks, looks very similar. You get into some different mechanics with coaching and how you present it and talk about it, uh, but the brute concept works extremely well, uh, no matter the product type. Uh, one thing, uh, read a comment real quick from Ginger. The drawback of putting prices high to low is that on mobile, they see the high first and might assume it's the only price in lead. I'm trying to think uh, through historically. I think historically we have typically put the lowest price first and we'll get into that in a second. So I think you're, I think Ginger, even what you're saying syncs up with what we've actually done. Uh, so let's kick over to slides and let's talk through that. We'll get to that in step number two here, set your prices. First, let's talk about, so three steps to do this. You have to create your packages. What are my packages? What's in them? How many do I have? That's number one. Then how do I price them? And last thing is once you create the packages, set them, launch them, you get some volume in, how do you know if the price is right or if the package is right? And there's step number three is like one of the most important things of the whole deal is once you've run a little bit of volume through that page and you've got, you know, a dozen, couple of dozen, a couple hundred clients, depending on what you're selling exactly, uh, you'll definitely want to make some adjustments. In fact, we went from, two tiers in our first launch to three tiers in our second launch that gave us a ton of data. And then we went back down to two tiers in the second, the third launch and kept it two tiers going forward. So there was a lot of data we got. We kind of understood what the different people wanted price point wise. And then we just set it and simplified it. Um, but the, the fascinating thing is if we would have never added a second, not known to do that, which outside of a friend serendipitously telling me about it, I would have never known. Um, we would have never known if $600 is way too high, way too low, just right. And, and to think, think about if you have like an XY, grass, uh, uh, XY axis graph and you just have one point on the graph. Is the trend line good or bad? I don't know. It's just a point on a graph. But if you have two points on a graph, you can tell if you're doing well or not doing well. If you have three points on a graph, then your confidence is really good. Um, so that's kind of the way to think about tier pricing. It is, especially in your first couple launches and your first couple dozen or a couple hundred clients or customers you're running through your product, it gives you a very good sense of where your market and your best fit clients at and what they'll pay and what they'll pay up to uh, for different products. And then you can settle in, down into typically for like courses and membership sites and whatnot, two tiers is like the ideal long-term uh, once you know what to, what to put in them and what the price to be. Okay, enough talking. Let's talk about how to do this. Um, step one, how to create the packages. So the very first thing is just whiteboard brainstorm. What could be all the things you could think of? Don't worry about how many packages. Don't worry about what goes where yet. Just brainstorm. And by the way, I would encourage you to take a, get your phone out and take a picture of this slide. This is probably the, like the best thing in the teaching today <laughs> because it gives you the ideas of what to put in the packages, which is the number one, number one question with all this stuff. It's like, all right, yeah, I get the package thing, but what in the world, I'm going to have to do a bunch of extra work. I'm going to have to record a bunch of stuff. No, 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 no. Most likely, if you have an existing product, you don't have to make anything new. Now that might mean if you're, let's, let's use, just make up an example. Let's say you have a $500 course you've been selling and you want to do tiered pricing. There's probably a couple things in that course you can move over to the $1,000 version and then you might just put one 15 minute call with you in there and now you can charge $1,000 for it. Or imagine you take two or three of the things in your six hundred or your $500 course now move them over to the middle package and then for your high end package, your $2,000 package, you keep everything in there but you add one, you have two 30 minute calls with you and unlimited e- email access to you that has kind of guardrails on it. Now you can take that $500 course and charge $2,000 for it. And most likely you can get about 20% of all your customers to buy the high-end package. I've seen that done dozens and dozens of times. Okay, so first thing on the list, create a list of every package item you can think of. 
uh, more quantity of the things. You see this in book launches. You don't just buy one for $10, you buy four for $29. So more quantity, and this doesn't all of the, this would be kind of like a grab bag. Find ones that sticks out to you as I read through them and write this on your list. More quantity, higher quality. Maybe you have more functionality, more features, more access, or something you can add in. This works really well with software. Can work really well with courses and coaching, depending on the nature of it. Uh, inclusion of some done for you services. Maybe you're like we do this in our coaching. We make your marketing plan for you. We audit your marketing assets for you. Uh, group coaching. Add group, a group coaching element into it. Add one-on-one -on -one coaching element to it. That's one of my favorite things, honestly, is adding a, well, number number five here, online call or a webinar. Like do a call with you for 15 minutes. The, the perceived value of that is extremely high. Um, and the, the work needed to do that, depending on the volume you're selling, is pretty stinking low. And if your volume is super high, have somebody on the team fulfill it. Uh, partnering with another entrepreneur, access for a longer time period. Uh, maybe it's a multi-year membership. Increased commitment from the customer. They sign up for six months instead of three. Uh, program customization. Advanced trainings. This is something we did a lot in courses. Having advanced trainings from other people that we shot, but you can only get them in more advanced packages. Case studies of successful customers. This is one of my favorite because a lot of times you have them already or all you have to do to produce them is do three interviews with three successful customers. And now you can add a bullet point into your table of three, you know, success stories of people losing 20 pounds and that you just have your videos and they just watch the videos and those uh, success stories. Unlimited consulting with your team. This is one of my single favorite ones. And let me walk you through the very last one. This is especially great for like asynchronous teaching. Um, so like a, a course, a membership site, uh, probably less so with coaching and consulting because this is just assumed in those product types. But unlimited consulting with your team really means you can email us and ask us questions. But you're pos positioning that, no duh, I should have that as an additional feature. And you're saying like, yeah, you can email us in with support questions and whatnot will help you. But like if you're in our 2000 other version, you have unlimited consulting with our team. Meaning you can email us at any time and we'll respond within a day or two with a custom tailored answer for you and help you workshop through the problem. What that really is, is just email access, something that you probably would do halfway decent already. But if you're charging two or three times the price for the people to get that, you can give them better service and faster service. And everybody else might get some version of that, but you're not focusing on that because it's not even a bullet point you're promising to people. So it's more like decreasing your workload on the lower tiers and shifting that workload to your higher tiers and charging substantially more for it. That has been, I think that's one thing that Brian added in on uh, his SEO that works course that we added in on 10K subs, several other course projects that we've sold over the year. It's a fantastic one for courses because it takes no upfront work and you're already doing it. And it actually creates less work overall because <laughs> you're doing less support for your early people, for your cheaper people and doing more support for the great people. And I'll tell you what, people that pay more money ask less questions <laughs> and they ask better questions. Um, so it's really good. Uh, all right, so let's pause for one second. We'll, we'll jump back over. I think we have a couple client questions. I'm going to kick over to Studio Pass for a minute. Uh, Jeanette, what we got for clients real quick, and we'll keep going with uh, creating packages. Yeah, ab absolutely. So some great ideas coming in over here. Troy um, just asked, would this work if I have five separate courses and I'm selling them separately? Could I sell it as a the one course and then a bundle of like five courses? Yes. Yes, is the short answer. I, mm -hmm. uh, like what, what you what you might word them as, on, and we could brainstorm through this more in depth, but what you might do is, let's say you're selling the courses for $199, and that's the typical, like what I, what I, I, off the top of my head, I would have like the base package for $199, or whatever your typical price point is. Remove three or four bullet points from that one and go ahead and create a $499 version. Then have a $2,999, like $2,999, well, I might jump it to like nineteen ninety nine, basically a two thousand dollar price point. But with it, you get six additional courses. Now, the tricky part with that is the actual value is going to be substantially higher than what you can communicate on that page. So they're going to get like six additional full blown courses, um, but you have to communicate the value in one sentence of them. <laughs> so, my guess is your bang for your buck isn't as high as if you custom made things for that, but it's really easy to do because you already have it. So I would start there. $199 for the thing you sell now or whatever your current price point is. Remove a handful of things from it. Create a double the price point. That's going to test the two different price points for you in effect. And then add a $2,000 version that adds your six other, four other courses in. That's probably the way I would start to test it. Run a promotion based on that. Put all the focus on the beginner level. And when people come to the page and see the options, they're going to see all three options. And you should see some good pricing splits. We'll go over what you should see in a minute to know you're like 
get it priced right as far as ranges. Yeah, Andy asked a great question too. And I, um, we had some good conversation in the chat, but I think the whole audience would like to know, does this work the same for recurring um, payment options? as it does for like a one-time fee for a course. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the first example, like the, the most popular place this is used to SaaS, which is recurring. Uh, so let I me mean, take a membership site, for instance. If you had the $19.99, let's say you're doing like paleo meal plans or something, and you currently charge $19.99 and you get the meal plans, you get the community, you get to email us and ask questions, you get live training once a week or once a month or something. So I would do nothing new. I would just create a... Uh, $29.99 version, leave the meal plans and email, leave meal plans and that's it in the $19.99 version, move everything else over the $29 version, we're on a promotion and see what the buying splits are. But that's what I do in that particular instance. And we have a specific product type, we can talk about it, but yes, absolutely. In fact, that's the number one place it's used is in SaaS around, the two things SaaS gates their tiers on are usually usage volume. So think about your ESP, you can send, like if you're using MailChimp, you can send, you know, whatever, I don't know the price in tiers, but say 5,000 emails and you pay $19.99 or it's free even up to some amount of usage. And then when you get over a certain amount of usage, then you have to pay $19.99 a month up to 20,000 emails sent. But that's usually not the only way they get it. They also get features as well. So for the free plan, you don't get our super cool editor and our automations and da 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 But on the $19.99 plan, you get double the email sends plus all these features. So membership site or coaching or consulting can work the exact same way. Meaning like we could for our coaching program charge $1,000 a month for just like the plan and reactive coaching. Meaning you can ask us questions anytime. I, I don't like this at all. This is a terrible idea, but we could potentially charge double the price. We'll review all your assets. We'll respond in less than three hours. We'll do X, Y, Z stuff that we already do. We just separate it into a different pricing tier and it helps anchor the, the, the lower tier. Uh, and it also generates more revenue. It, it would definitely generate more revenue immediately because <laughs> more people would people would pay more money for it. Um, but that, that's not the only thing in life that matters. So in that particular instance, I don't love that for product strategy, but but yes, it would work for recurring. Uh, we got right. one last one here. Yeah, I want to run by you because I've heard excellent answers from you on this one. Silky um, works with uh, clients who are um, traveling through grief. And so this is what she said. I'm currently doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and it all, it's all pay as you go, which I still need for my brick and mortar and general therapy business. But for grief, I need those packages. How do I align those so it doesn't come across as weird that I only do packages for the problem? I mean, the only person that's weird to is you. <laughs> I, just, I literally just had a conversation with a, with a friend I go to church with yesterday. He's a former MLB baseball player. He's doing like... He's basically charging to, and ultimately this is how he's, this is product positioning more than, than packaging, although these are interrelated topics. Uh, but he's basically selling one-on-one -on -one 30 minute Skype calls for $250. But what he's really doing is he's selling to a couple different types of people right now. So he'll eventually hone in on one type, but he's selling like to a D1 college in Massachusetts somewhere. I don't remember the school, uh, but basically doing group coaching. He's coaching with the coaches, the players and the assistant coaches, but he's charging them by the hour for it which is just annoying for everyone. When you charge by the hour, I'm counting the hours. I'm trying to keep a tally in my head. I mean, like marriage counselors work like this for the most part. I have to remember to book my next session. I have to basically I have to re I have to go through the buying decision every single time I meet with you. And that is just a really bad idea. Um, so this is not anything to do with the client at all. This is all packaging of an offer. So actually I would encourage you to come next week to Shop Talk. We're going to talk about how to create an irresistible offer. I think this is more of like, how you package up and frame your offer itself. Uh, then once you have the core offer, can you create two different packages to see which one would sell the best and maybe focus on one or just always have two packages? Yes, but this is more of like, how do I even think about what I sell uh, on that level? But I, I'll just tell you this, absolutely, if you sell by the hour right now, in almost every instance I've seen, will be greatly benefited in nearly every measurable way. Client result, your happiness, revenue, by going to selling packages with recurring components on it, as opposed to just a flat hourly rate where you book sessions. Yep. All right, let's flip back over to teaching real quick, get through uh, our three steps, just to uh, zoom out real quick. Remember, going through three steps to implement tiered pricing, creating the packages, setting your prices, analyzing, adjusting. We've talked about step one of creating your packages, brainstorm out all the things you could do. And just use your gut here. Which things stand out to you as high impact, 
you're confident you could do it well, and it's not like crazy intense to do. And that'll be based on your personality and your experience. So pick those. Don't start with the crazy complicated stuff. The order of magnitude impact difference between anything on this list and the other thing on this list is, is not high. Meaning if it seems like totally overwhelming to even think about the idea of doing unlimited consulting with your team, but the idea of doing uh, having a little small done for you service added in for one of the key sticking points in your product, just do the done for you service thing. That's fine. Or vice versa. Uh, the, the Nothing on this is like substantially better than the other thing. So pick the one that feels good to you, makes sense with clients. You're like, oh, I could do that. That would work. Uh, step two. The first thing to do is to create your highest end tier. Create your, I like using the name for this, the complete tier. And on, the, on the screenshot here, it says master. In the, after this first launch, we went to using the word complete. Like this is the complete product is the highest priced version. Now you can buy the starter version, which is typically what we call the beginner package, like the, the, the lowest tier, but the top tier is the full product. And you can buy like partial versions of the product if you want. So a couple ways to think about this, creating it. And by creating it, I'm not talking about putting this stuff together. I'm talking about open up a Google Doc, pull out a pen and paper and like invent it on paper before you invent it in real life. So the first thing you've done is brainstorm out all the things you potentially could add to what you have already. The second thing is to wave your magic wand over your product. Don't worry about pricing yet. Just what would be an amazing deal? Like just what would be really good? Put yourself in the shoes of the client, spend about 30 minutes, add three or four bullet points to what you sell currently. That's your highest package for now. Now we're going to do some testing to make sure it's right, but that's the way to think about your highest package. Now your middle and low package are going to simply be subtraction. You're going to remove stuff out of your top tier package. You don't have to invent new stuff. Like remember, you've now invented the complete tier. This is the highest end to create your middle. Um, uh -oh, what did I do here? Oh, there we go. Um, to create your middle. Oh, crap. Hold on a second. My little slide turner thing went weird on me. To create your middle package, um, go to your bullet points you've made for your top end package and remove a handful of add-ons. Uh, lower the number of quantity of books they get. Lower the number of advanced trainings they get. Lower the time period of unlimited consulting they get down from 12 months to six months or from six months to three months. Lower down the Voxer coaching they get from 90 days or 12 pings to 10 pings or 30 days. Go through the list that you've made, shorter membership length time, fewer Q&A calls, fewer bonus modules. Take the bonus modules out altogether. But the product at the end of that, you're looking at it, you're like, this is still like really freaking good. This is good. That's your middle package. And your beginner package um, is just bare bones. It is just the course, no community, no limited consulting, no advanced training. It's just the plan, not ongoing coaching, not unlimited on-demand access to you, not done for you, not one Zoom call a week. It's just bare bones. It still solves the problem, but there's no bells and whistles. Um, then once you've done that, just look at all three packages side by side. This is the first pass at this is 60% art, 40% science. So don't try to over-science this. Don't try to over-logic this. Use your gut on this. Um, and then ask yourself a handful of questions about the final three packages that you've kind of outlined in a Google Doc. Do each of these packages really give value, like really good value for the price point to the customer? Is the mid-tier package more enticing than the low-tier package? Is the top-tier package more enticing than either one of the other ones? What's one thing I could add to each package to make it better? So there's a handful of questions to ask of it. And we'll send you a checklist out, by the way, if you're on the VIP list, just, well, maybe Ben can post that in chat. Uh, if you aren't already on the SMS list, we'll send out a checklist version of all this to you so you can like run through this. You don't have to memorize all this off the top of your head. I know it's a lot. Um, and uh, Matt, by the way, is asking a question. What's the optimum number of options to give? Three I have found in your first couple launches and the first time to do tier packaging, I would do three. And then I've seen, I have multiple times gone down to two after I've gotten some data points on. I kind of know the splits. And we'll walk through that in a second on the analyze step. Uh, all right, so to create your packages, brainstorm the contents. I gave you a, a grab bag of things to choose from. Create your top tier, your complete package first. And then from that, do use subtraction to create your mid and base tier and then evaluate your packages on the five questions I give you to make sure they pass your instinct test. Like, do they feel really good for the value? Is there one thing you could add back into them to make it extremely effective? That's your rough draft of your packages. Then we get to step two, which is your pricing. So uh, you want to look at comps in your industry as step number one of this, meaning if people weren't going to hire you or buy your product in order to solve the problem they're going to solve, what would they do? That's a competitor. So go look at them and just see what their price points are. They might not even have tier pricing. That's fine. Look at the top companies and influencers in your industry and see if anyone uses tier pricing. 
And if so, how are they set up and what do they include? And if not, what's the price point and what do they include? The point is not to copy them. It's to just inform your instinct of pricing and contents of packages or pricing of core product. Uh, and you want to do this with three to five products that your customer might hire or buy if they didn't hire you. So what's the core problem you solve? Um, if they didn't hire you or buy your product to solve it, what would they do? Go look at that. So it might not be another course. It might not be another coach. It might be some other alternative to solving the problem. Go investigate them. You'll get tons of ideas. The best ideas you'll get for your package of con- your, your package contents and your pricing, primarily your packaging, comes from looking at different product types that solve the same problem. We'll come up with some really cool ideas doing that. Uh, so include various product types, not just the one that you are selling, not just other coaches, not just other courses, not just other agencies, not just other software companies. Look at people that solve the problem with different product types and the same product type. Don't just avoid people that do the same product type. So inform your gut intuition by doing an hour of research. Don't go overboard with this. If you have seven spreadsheets analyzing this, you've gone overboard with this. Don't do that. So after you've looked at that and informed your intuition, price your base tier package first. So we're going to go the opposite order of creating your packages. Instead of, creating your, instead of pricing your high end first, we're going to price your base tier first. And this is why. Um, we want your base tier to be extremely competitive, if not like the best deal out there for solving this problem. That's not going to be the case for the higher end ones. But if you're selling a, a course on writing a book and you look at three other courses on writing books, you look at three other coaching programs on writing books, three other agencies that do writing of books, your pricing comps are going to come from people selling the same product type typically. And if you go on Udemy and you go to, you know, sub publishing, you could go to different places and you're seeing these, uh, typically that, that product's a $49 product, then I would price mine for $47 as the sticker price for the base tier. Then from there, you're going to double the price for your mid tier and double the price again for your top tier. So that $47 uh, course would be $97 for my mid tier and $197 for my top tier. Or if you picked a base price of $29 for your base tier, you'd have $59 for your mid tier and $129 for your top tier. So set the base extremely competitive and then double it for the mid and double it again for the top. And there are there are exceptions for this. You saw the Vern Harnish thing where it was, I think it was $9.99 and then $2,000 and then it was 10 x for the top tier because it's like heavy done for you. It's like hardcore consult. It's almost a different product type he's put in the same, in the same price comparison. Uh, so in general, keep it simple for your first launch, for your first promotion you're going to do with with tier packaging. If you've not done this before, double it for your mid, double it for your top. Don't worry about it being perfect. Your first promotion or launch that you do with tiered pricing is going to give you a ton of data. We'll go over what you want to see here in a second and we'll allow you to do adjustments for your next one. So a while ago, in the very beginning of this, I showed you that example of the first course launch I did where we would have done 145 or 140,000, but we added a second tier last minute and we did 196. Um, the next launch, we added a third tier and did 250. <laughs> so like we added another $100,000 or so by adding a third tier to it. Um, so what we want to know in the very first promotion that we do with tier pricing, the very first launch you do with tier pricing is how what percentage of people are buying in each category. And then you can make adjustments based on that to pricing and package. So to set your prices, research competition price points, price your base tier to be extremely competitive and appealing, Double the base to set your mid tier, double the mid tier to set your top tier price. Here's one little pro tip too. Hopefully this isn't overwhelming. Another little trick you can use is the, st- how to talk, how to say this. Um, well, maybe, maybe, maybe make sure I bring up how to use this base tier competitive price point with, with uh, um, payment plans. Because you can add, this is kind of advanced and I haven't thought about how to talk about it simply. So uh, let's make sure we bring that up in Q&A. Because anybody, if you're selling a higher, like you're selling a $1,000 course as the base package, there's a few things you can do with payment plans and how you present them on the sales page that can make a giant difference. So let's, let's cover that kind of at the end because uh, most people won't fit that category. But if you do, like do this, it's good. Okay, last step. Create the packages, set your prices, analyze and adjust. Before we jump into analyze and adjust, uh, let's kick over to Ben and Will. How y'all doing over there? Any questions on y'all side so far? Anything that's been confusing or stuck out to you? Maybe Will, since you didn't talk last time. <clears throat> yeah, I really like the simplicity of doubling the price. I think people get so hung up on the price. And also, Brian, I'll tell you this too. People just throw numbers out there as if it's like, you know, picking out a chocolate chip cookie versus a white chocolate chip cookie at a store. And you're like, dude, and they're like, I don't know why people don't buy this. Mm. Like, well, who did you ask? Well, I would buy it at this price. 
That is the worst advice ever. <laughs> like just spend 15 minutes to go see what other people are charging yeah. and, 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 and mock off of that. Right. Like, so I see that all the time. Um, I can't tell That's you probably one of the best things about using three different price points is it's almost risk mitigation. It is. You know, your you know, your lowest price is going to be cheaper or at the same price as everybody else. So price won't be a problem with it. And you'll see how the high ones do. That's kind of the mindset to go into it with. And if you've done your research well and you've created a good product, um, it'll be extremely effective for generating more revenue. So that's that's good. Jeanette, let's kick over to you in Studio Pass with clients. How are we doing over there? Any any questions or things stick out? Uh, yeah, the the big uh, conversation over here is pricing and getting that right. Kind of like what Will was saying. They don't just want to guess. Um, we have two coaches here who are like it's sometimes hard to spy on other coaches' pricing because you don't want to go through the whole call process. Yep. Um, I reminded them we've got a team of coaches with visibility on hundreds of coaching prices. So that's awesome. We should make a directory of that. We should just go like do a hundred calls of a hundred different coaching programs and like make a directory of that stuff. So people can have some comps. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Cause you just don't have sales pages for a lot of coaching products because it's typically done on the phone. Uh, so it's hard to do competitive research. It just takes more time. Yeah. That's good. Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, one question in chat uh, on YouTube was Jason. He was asking, what's the tap filter? I kind of breezed over that because I was kind of getting long-winded there. Tap filter is a great way to think about package contents. We talked about this in creating high ticket coaching programs as well. It's TAP stands for training, access, and perks. So there's like three categories to think through in making your packages. Could you add more training, more advanced training, more interesting training, more niche training, more on-demand training? Could you add more access to you, your team, your contacts? And could you add additional perks in, things you would do for them or cool little things they get as a result of having the higher package. So using the tap filter to go back over your package, like, all right, training, access, and perks. How are we doing here? Um, Cause you can take the same core curriculum and just add access and perks and 10 X, 20 X, 30 X the price uh, from having the right ones in there. Yep. So, all right. So now let's talk about step three, analyzing and adjusting. You've done your promotion. You've, you've rolled out your tiers. This is what you typically want to see. If you take a picture of a second screen, take a picture of this. The list of grab bag of things to put in your packages, first most important slide, this is the second most important slide. This, These are the percentage of clients that should roughly buy each package. You want about 40 to 55% of your, your clients, your customers to buy your small package, about 20 to 30% of people to buy the medium package, and to 10 to 15% to buy the large package. So at the end of your first promotion, at the end of your first month of doing this, depending on the type of product you're selling, you should go back and look and see what percentage of people bought each package that had an opportunity to buy? That hit my sales page and bought, um, that uh, I had a phone call with and bought. What percentage of clients bought each package? If you are something drastically different than this, then you got a, you got a problem somewhere. Like most people would think, all right, well, what if 80% of my people buy my large package? I've seen that many times. That's not a good thing. It means you are severely underpriced. It means they would have paid four times more if you'd have just had the option available and you didn't. Or on the other end of the spectrum, if you had 90% of people buy your small package, that means you're severely overpriced. Um, and your whole pricing tiers need to shift down a click. But the great thing is if you use three to start, it's one of the best risk mitigation factors for launching a new product, doing a new promotion, because you will hit in that range. You've done your research to know the, the, the low end of where you need to be. And you're gonna find like, has everybody in my industry just been, charged, been afraid to charge more? A lot of times that's the case, or has nobody ever tested this? And I've like done my research, but I put a lower end option and we had like 10X the conversions. Great, you found that out. Now you can build your whole business on that competitive advantage. A couple of tips on this. Tons of people buying your high end package is not a good thing. If you get more than 15% of people buying your high end package, it means everything is underpriced and you're leaving a ton of cash on the table. Tip number two, very few buying your base package is a sign that everything is underpriced. So if you get like 5% of people buying your base package and people are buying your high end package, same thing means you're severely uh, underpriced. If no one is buying anything, any of them, if you're just conversions across the board, you're planning for 50 people and you got three people, this isn't a package and pricing problem. If you followed the methodology we talked about, especially you've anchored your low end on based on research, you just have an offer and a communication problem. In which case I would encourage you to show up next week. We're, we're going to talk about creating irresistible offers. <laughs> it's like you probably just like aren't speaking your people's language. The product isn't resonating. You have three different pricing po price points out there, three different packages. You've done your work and it's not converting at all. Then this is a, an offer problem or potentially you aren't talking about the offer in the right kind of way, which is kind of an offer problem. So next week we're going to cover that particular problem. So 
if you're on the VIP list, text VIP to 615-903-8108. We'll send you out a checklist, a guide, and 10 different examples of how to do tiered price. And along with this training, so you can go back through this and slow me down a little bit because I tend to get going fast and talk through things. Um, so if you if you would like to do tiered pricing, text VIP to 615-903-8108. Or if you're already on the VIP list, just wait till 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Ben's going to send a package up and send out uh, this video, a checklist, a guide, a bunch of examples for us. Uh, so we'll have that. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that I had sabbatical this last month in the month of April, which we need to do like a whole thing on that. That's like one of the best things I've ever done to a business owner. We just started year number nine of this business and it was so good to have a break. But I had um, I had one thing scheduled during that month and it was a one-on-one coaching day with the Duncans. And that's the, the folks pictured here. This is Kirk on the right, Cody in the, in the middle and... I should have remembered her name. Now I forgot her name. What's her name, Bethany? Give me your name. Kim, there you go. I know it's 3K. I just totally went blank all of a sudden. Anyway, they were fantastic people. They came to Nashville and we did a full coaching day and we're coaching them for 106 months and growing their business. Uh, they have a fantastic business. Um, anyway, we'll go over the details of that, but it was it's one of my favorite things to do. And it's our, our, our core product is coaching people one-on-one. I showed you the flywheel at the very beginning where the, the number one thing we do is solve our own problems so that we can package up the results and give them to our clients. Their business grows and they tell their friends about us and we grow as a result. We just continue that flywheel going around. This was the highlight uh, of my 30 days. It was the only work thing I did the entire time was meet with them, meet with the client, uh, create a plan for them. You can see the output on the right side there. This is their revenue roadmap and the timeline of everything you do on the bottom is their marketing system that we designed from scratch. Uh, when we take clients, the first thing we do is what we did for Kim and Kirk and Cody is we analyze everything in the business. We go through our uh, ATM system because you got to have three things to make a business work. You have to attract leads, you have to build trust with them, and you have to monetize them. And there's several critical components of doing each one of those well. And if you you could just miss one thing, like on this graph here, the new lead volume is a D minus. And there's several other things here that are D minuses as well. Uh, but if everything else is A plus and lead volume is D minus, your business will not grow. It's impossible to grow if your lead volume is too low. So the first thing we do, just like taking your car into the shop and taking it to Jiffy Lube, or you're taking it to get service. They did the 115 point inspection. That's the first thing we do for clients. The first thing we did with Kim and Cody and Kurt was to inspect the entire business. Then we custom designed over the course of a day their marketing system for them. Like, all right, let's fast forward a year. How does our marketing and sales actually need to work? Let's like make a plan on paper for it. So we did that. And then we create the timeline and the actual execution plan. Showing on a timeline, revenue expectations all along the way, and the exact strategies we're going to execute. And then our job in coaching is to make sure each week we have a clear objective that we're holding them accountable for it, and they're doing the work and know how to do it. That's how we do coaching. If you're interested in that, if you want us to coach you, we have a couple different price points for the product. I've mentioned them on the call here. Um, but if you want me to look at your business and give you one unique thing you could do to double your revenue throughout the rest of 2022, I'd love to talk. So just text COACH to 615-903-8108 um, or email VIP at growthtools.com. Just email the word COACH there and we'll get on the phone and schedule the time and chat with you. I'd love to get in the weeds of your business just like we did uh, with Kirk and Kim and Cody uh, and learn about what you do. In fact, at the end of our day together, uh, Kirk recorded this video kind of talking about it. Just so you can get a sample of like what it's like to work with us. Even though our numbers are where they're at, you never, even though our numbers are where they're at, you never balked at it. You never mocked us. You never even made it seem like it wasn't that big of a deal. Because we know you work with big people. And you know, like really gigantic companies. But you treated us like we are the most important company in this whole entire world. And that really made uh, an impression upon me. And then the actual plan. You nailed it down to the very details and the numbers. And to be able to see the numbers and to see what we need to do, I watched... Uh, both my wife and my son as we're all there talking to you. I watched as the light came on inside of us and it's like, we can do this. And you showed us down to the minute detail what we need to do. That was powerful because we literally are walking away with knowing what to do. And so that was super cool. And, and I really appreciate that because I trust you. I just have to tell you, with everything you did, I built a lot of trust in you and the fact that you know what you're talking about, you care about what we're doing, and that means a lot to me because I cannot stand coaches who just go off in the weeds and, and I walk away and I'm like, I don't know what to do. But with you, it was clear, it was precise, and it's doable. And that was the coolest day ever to spend the day with you. It was awesome. So if you're interested in having me and Will and Ben 
put our eyes together in Jeanette and we had a bunch of clients on the call as well, create an actual plan for you from people that have actually done it before and guided and sherpered hundreds of people through growing their business. We'd love to do that. We'd love to talk and make sure it's a good fit, make sure you're at the right point of business and whatnot. Uh, learn about what you're doing. And at least at the end of our call, you leave with one unique thing you can do to double your revenue in 2022. One thing you haven't thought of before, one thing you haven't considered before, one thing you haven't experimented with before at the end of the call. If nothing else, you'll leave with that. And at best, we'll work together and your business will grow. And the great thing is we guarantee the results of our clients. If um, the plan we create for you isn't something that makes you tear up, if it isn't something that when you get it, you're unreasonably excited about it, you get to keep it. You get to keep everything and get your money back. And if at the end of 90 days, you choose to, to pick the insanity path plan, which is I'm going to work my face off and you haven't ROI'd your coaching investment, meaning you haven't made at least $10,000 back in the first 90 days as a, as a result of our coaching, then you get your money back. Plus we give you $1,000 to hire another coach. So we don't just like talk a big game and talk about all the cool things you could do. We guarantee the results and do everything humanly possible to make it almost impossible for your business not to grow. So if that's the kind of coach you want, if that piques your interest, if you'd like the training today, text COACH to 615-903-8108 uh, and we'll talk, see if it's a good fit. Here's a couple of clients, other clients. Uh, Jeremy hired us five months ago, said he wrapped up my most successful podcast, Marketing Academy launch yet $18,000 and onboarded the new cohort of students into the program. Uh, another client, Amanda, hired us two months ago. I got two more clients signed on, finished April at $11,000 a new client onboarding. One last one, Darren, my first official partnership pitch was a success. They've agreed to promote my webinar to their list of 20,000 email subscribers. That's really cool. Uh, okay, so I've spent the last hour and six minutes talking about uh, things that we have done, two different things. The ad strategy that Ben mentioned at the very beginning of the first 10 minutes, which by the way, somebody asked if we could share that. Uh, once this is over, you can just like rewind the video and go watch it. We'll also send it out on the VIP list as well. So make sure you're on that. So we shared that. We also shared how using tiered pricing has transformed our business, directly added hundreds of thousands of dollars to our bottom line. Just last month, it added almost $50,000 to our business as a result of having a higher package. Uh, I got a question for you now. Like I want to get your advice on something. Uh, so put your marketer brain on for a second, take it off of your business, put it on our business for a second. I want to get your feedback and opinion on how, how you would solve this problem. So we have a Facebook funnel that's successful and working. Uh, I'll show you an example of it here in a second. I'll show you the, the main page I have a question for. And the way the funnel works is we have an ad that goes to a landing page. And on that landing page, you book a phone call with us and then you get on the call and we tell you about the coaching program and some people buy it and some people don't. The problem is I want to get, we basically in effect pay $150 for a lead, like for an, a contact piece of information. We want to have an intermediary step where we're able to collect email addresses for under $10 while not affecting the main funnel itself. I mean, this is complicated. Let me pull up, let me pull up this and I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Uh, no, that's not the right thing. There we go. All right, there we go. Uh, so this is the page when you click, let me move my screen over here. When you click the Facebook ad, you come to this page, get 10 new high ticket clients or you don't pay, when some other online coaches, some examples, schedule your call. So this is a very, very simple page. When you click the button, you get an application you fill out. And as long as you don't get screened out, which most people don't, then you'll go to a scheduler. So what I would like, if I could wave a magic wand, there, there would be a step between the application and the button that allows us to collect their email address, but it doesn't affect any of the down the funnel stuff at all. Meaning we still get the call, the call for the same amount. We still get a client for the same amount but we're able to collect a lot more contact information because basically we only collect the contact information from people to go all the way through the entire booking process. Um, so is there a way to work a lead magnet into this? Is there a way to work a give me your email address to go forward into this without it being weird, without it like tanking opt-in rates? What ideas we got? <laughs> That's the question. That's kind of a complicated. How do we keep the same funnel but collect substantially more email addresses and not affect the funnel negatively at all? Any ideas come to mind? Ben will feel free to feel free to chime in as well if you have anything off the top of your head. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. So, so one, one of the things, things we're, we're looking, looking at, at here is an opt-in opt for an educational, educational VSL. VSL. So, so there's, there's actually, actually a separate, separate page that, that people, people opt in on beforehand. beforehand the VSL, VSL presents, presents 
some value, value and, and really digs into the, the pain points. points. It doesn't take very long. long. It's, it's like, like not, not quite, quite mini mini style. style. BSL, BSL is like five minutes or less. And, and then, then the call, call game. game. So that's, that's a really common. It changes the funnel completely, right really, really, though, right? Like your ad's different. You're not coming to a book a call page. Like not opposed to it. Also different funnel, right? Or no? Our ad would be similar. Our first landing page would be totally different. And then we would, we have, would have a video, video page with a vocal call button. button. So, so there, there would be, be a step, step forward this. this. Yeah. Yeah. Will, any ideas on your side? I don't know. I, I kind of tend, tend to say, say like, like, what, what if, if you test is keeping it super, super stupid, stupid and just said, said like, like, get 10, 10 new high ticket clients or get, get invited, invited to get 10, 10 new high ticket clients with some new details. details. And like, like just try it. Try and, and put, put the email, email there, there, and then, and then they, they walk, walk through, through the qualifications, qualifications on the next page. page. You, don't you don't know, know that it's there yet. Yeah. So the like, same get the invite, we'll email, we'll email to you. It's just like, we'll send you information, but then you just send them through the same thing. Correct. Correct. You, send you send them through the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Laura I mean, I mean, YouTube said, what about a PDF of case studies of people who have had the call on the value they got from the call, <laughs> the opt-ins? Yeah. Ben, what were you going to say? Um, I like uh, the PDF case study. I actually just started seeing ads where it uh, looks like an ad agency for coaches and they lead you to a case study you opt in for. So similar idea. Yeah, and if you do the opt in, but you still send them through the schedule, like as soon as you get the opt in, like, hey, we're sending it to you. Why don't you apply to see if you have like, as long as you just have to check your numbers as you went. Because if you could control, if you could lock in your application cost and your booking call cost, but put one step in front of it, they get emails for $10 or less. Like right. that's the core problem we're trying to solve really. Ideally yeah, without like changing the entire funnel because that like adds a whole nother layer of effort to the thing. Yeah, and the core thing that we have been testing through, you know, in getting, focusing on the lead gen aspect of it too, is you can't have too hard of a bait and switch where you get the lead magnet and then you ask for a call. Like there still has to be some expectation of, you know, like the call still makes sense afterwards. Yeah, 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 totally. Cool. All right, let's jump over to clients real quick. Jeanette, any ideas flowing over there with clients on how they would solve this problem? Um, not yet. <laughs> we were kind of stuck on some of the, we're talking about getting a, an abbreviation cheat sheet up because like VSL and some other acronyms uh, yeah, yeah. that were just uh, going by kind of quick. So we were straightening out some of that. So we're a little behind. So VSL was video sales letter for those of you all that might not catch that. I hate acronyms actually. So um, <laughs> they can get overdone to the point where you don't even know what somebody's saying. Uh, cool. All right, cool. That's good. Some good ideas thrown out. Appreciate y'all for entertaining that. Definitely helpful to talk through. Uh, quick note, next week, uh, Shop Talk is going to be about how to create an ir irresistible product or offer in four easy steps. So I'm going to walk you through. I actually made a new offer last week unrelated to growth tools. This is a cool idea I had. And I pulled out this cheat sheet I'm going to walk you through, this worksheet I'm going to walk you through and made the offer using it. So I'm going to walk you through how we've made our last five offers that have all done, well, all have done in the multiple six figures, several of which have done in multiple seven figures and eight figures before I'll walk you through that process. So if you like have an idea of what you want to do and you're not quite sure how to articulate it, or if you have a product that's not selling as well as you want, you think it has more potential, like this worksheet and this uh, workshop is really going to help you punch it up, dial it in where it's something that when people hear it in less than 10 seconds, they can't help but to want to get more information and to buy the thing. That's the goal. If you don't have that, all the other things you would do in marketing and sales are going to be like overworking to compensate for that. So let's just fix the main thing, which is the actual offer that you've had. That's next week. How to create an irresistible offer in four steps or less. All right. That's all I got for this week. Here's the last thing we do typically. We used to do this uh, as a team on Zoom after we finished up Shop Talk. But we're going to do this live just so y'all can see. We, we love being super transparent what we do. Uh, a lot of times you can learn interesting and weird things. We're going to go uh, very, um, very unpolished. And we're going to just have a team debrief here, literally with the Growth Tools team, talking about what we like from Shop Talk this week, what we didn't like, changes for next week. Uh, and I'll see if I can get everybody's faces up here so we're not talking to just a black box here. Um, so uh, actually, let me unmute Zoom too so Jeanette and Bethany can talk. Uh, and I'll not keep two me's up there. So Will, Ben, Jeanette, Bethany, Heather, I think are the, the main people from Growth Tools that are here. Uh, what did you like? What did you not like? What would you like to see different from uh, next time? 
Well, well the, the first thing, thing on my radar, radar that I always look, look at is how, how many, many clicks did our invites, invites have when we started uh, streaming. streaming. And, and our, our best, best so far is about a thousand clicks, clicks. Um, high, high 900s. 900s. Today, Today we were in the mid 200s. 200s. So, so I always look, look at that to uh, bring it back, back to the drawing board, board and uh, workshop to copy a little bit. Topics I think matter and the framework of subject line and how we invite to the show are all key factors in that. Yeah, you said 200 and 900. Today was 200. The best one's been 900. Yes. yes. Yeah. My, my sense was we got too cute with our subject line and we kind of hid, we buried the lead, meaning we have a successful blog post talking about this topic with a headline that I think makes us rank in page one for Google of it, or it did for a long time at least. Um, mm-hmm. I would have tend to have started with that. And like, we almost like hid the mechanism. And I think this mechanism is well known enough that we could have like focused on the mechanism actually versus like, and we kind of had two this almost was borderline like a price increase kind of thing. Again, we had one of those a couple of weeks ago. I don't know how it performed, but um, that was my sense. But and you never know. Half the time I'm wrong on that crap. So <laughs> you, don't, you don't know until you do it. Um, but yeah. That makes sense to me though. And there is something powerful when you start talking about pricing. Uh, I use this in the opening question for the workshop portion. The, the is your pricing right question is something that I've seen routinely resonate with people because they think their pricing is wrong. The truth is there's no right or wrong to it. <laughs> there's like an optimization piece, but like that language tends to work really well when you talk about pricing is like, are your packages right? Is your product right? Is your offer right? Like you can kind of use that and it, it, it hits people with the way they think. Uh, even if mm. like that particular construct mm. isn't the most healthy way to talk about it, like it is fairly whatever. So, all right, what else do yeah, you have? Or anybody else have comments on name or email invites? Yeah, I'm wondering if the attendance was also just the lack of um, continuity over the last month. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely seen if we just did one row, people show up. <laughs> but also yeah. the invitation matters. I mean, we did that IRS one oh, yeah. we thought was like not going to do, but we just like basically get $50,000 of free money and we had 1,000 people show up. Um, so title works, consistency. It's, my guess would be it's a combination of both of those things. All right, what else? Yeah, other <laughs> The other thing I wanted to ask, um, I didn't like talking for the clients. I would have rather you talk to them. So me, for example, just saying, hey, Troy's got a question. Troy, why don't you unmute? What do you think about? Yeah, I think I think we wade into that because you don't want it to be super clunky, meaning we need to get used to it. You need to get used to it. They need to get used to it. So I was totally fine with how we interact with clients this time. I think you just start like, what we want is is ideally the same clients to start showing up where we get like some continuity and they kind of get the gist and then we're moving kind of quick. Um, what we don't want is like 15 second awkward pauses of people trying to figure out how to turn the video on and, and mic on. And that, that just like takes a little bit of repetition. So I think we kind of get there for sure. I like it. That sounds good. I think, I think oh, go ahead, Jeanette. Jeanette. Oh, it. no, I'm good. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, yeah, so, so the, the other, other bit on that that I have is if, if we, we have, have a slide, slide somewhere, somewhere, maybe Jeanette, Jeanette you can follow along and see where, see where Brian, Brian is, is in the slide deck, deck as, as he's presenting, then, then we can have client questions, questions ready, ready and they, they know, know the, the protocol, protocol for like unmuting like, like, and getting, getting on. on. I, I think, think that, that would ease out a lot of that transition too that you were just referring to, Brian. Yeah, we did that really well, Ben, when you went through the clients. Like I had them ready to go. I had them. Yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah, and that did work pretty smooth. Yeah, I had to work. I had to pay attention. But yeah, having them ahead of time, like I was individually cleaning people, prepping them, making sure mics were on, cameras on, so that it would flow. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Hey, on the positive side, Studio Pass worked for the first time. Yeah. yeah. And it was like decently smooth. Like that went well. I was like over the moon excited how it worked after like four misses. So. <laughs> yeah. This is good. The only thing I noticed is, Brian, you don't see their comments. So when you're reading off comments, you don't see the client's comments. You only see everyone else's comments. No, and if I bring them up on my screen, it actually jacks up the screen share. I actually had them up on a um, monitor. Um, but when I go to the slide that has them on it, it actually pulls that in as well as part of the screen. It makes it weird. So you'll have to feed those, I think, to me. Okay. Um, that sounds good. it was really helpful when Ben told me there were two or three questions waiting because I just like stopped and just went over there uh, and in retrospect I should have finished the section and then gone over there and versus stopping right in the middle of the section because I kind of killed continuity a little bit but I, it was still I was I was well pleased with that 
What else? Agreed. Agreed. I like, I like the, the time. time. It was. It was I, think I think it was, it was the, right the right amount of time, time but, also but also at the same, same time, time, I missed. I missed, I missed, I missed the, the client interview. interview. I missed, I missed the, the case study, study like, like different, different topic. topic. I, I do, do think, think that that's, that that's worth, worth having, having the extra, extra time, time in for. Yeah. Um, um, maybe, maybe that's, that's just a personal preference. preference. But I was but also the one who said it should be shorter. And now I'm like, no, I love that it was shorter, but I missed that. So you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think we could, cut, the, no, we could no, cut 20% no. of the detail in the teaching and still be in the under hour 15 range with the client interview just by being punctual. Mm-hmm. And Because I went probably a little too deep in the training here uh, and went a layer deeper than it really needed to be. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm with you, Will. I think we definitely do interviews as well. But you can't be going an hour with the workshop and then do interviews. You're just back up to the same amount. I thought the teaching would actually be shorter, but... Um, also going to studio pass two or three times and getting to y'all a couple times. I feel like it kept cutting it up and was it, it wasn't like super boring, but it does extend a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I thought the time felt really good too. And we didn't see, well, at least on my side, I didn't see the drop off mm-hmm. that we usually get with the dinner hour, you know, cause I'm Eastern time. So my kids are in there. Hey, can I make garlic bread? You know, but I didn't see the same amount of drop off that we usually get. Yeah. I didn't particularly love the pre-recorded video thing. I much prefer which test one over that. It was okay, it was okay. it was super niche too. I mean, I'm fine to try keep playing around a little bit. I don't not fully sure, sure. It, nixing it or anything, but um, I think there's a universal usability of the which test one stuff, no matter what stage you're at, and an interesting nature mm-hmm. of it. The Facebook thing was really interesting, but so niche. I, I actually didn't even care about it. I'm like, I, I never do that. I'm like, I'm not. I mean, now I'm not the ideal client, so maybe I don't matter yeah, yeah. particularly. But I'm thinking about clients as well. Like, unless you're running Facebook ads and really paying attention in the weeds of it, like it just doesn't matter much. Whereas landing page tests and email tests and subject line tests is pretty much applicable to anybody, no matter what. Um, mm-hmm. The clients like that. Well, at least John likes it a lot. Yeah. He said I do ads. I've never seen that. That's cool. Yeah. You know, like the feedback is good on it. That's good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Jeanette, I had a note. Your internet and audio uh, like are not good. <laughs> I think your AirPods oh, so outside sorry. on Wi-Fi is my guess, but uh, the setting cool, the connection not great. Like you sound really muffled. Right. I stuff. get my IT husband on it. <laughs> there you go. Me a cord. Yeah. He'll love that. He loves that list. And I had the intro music as a thing to fix. Mm-hmm. I think, I think like, that might be just me. Because uh, Heather said she could hear it. It cut it out, out early. early. It uh, cut out in 45 seconds. The, the audio oh, track okay. just ran okay. out. The audio track's not timed at the end of five minutes. So. But that's an easy fix. You know, I just need to make sure I do it. Cool. What else? Um, I feel, I feel like, like I want, I want Will's, Will's input. input. Do you feel, do you feel like, like you have, have enough, enough input, input? Throughout, throughout the show, the show. like, like yeah, yeah, co-host. Co-host. but I also can yeah. talk, talk too much. Too much. <laughs> Will, Will will never say, say that, that he has, he has enough, enough input. input. <laughs> Will, do you, talk, do you talk enough? You're like no. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think building, building it in might be good. Be good and though to, to your point, point um, um, maybe, maybe just, just being more intentional about building it in. I don't know the answer to that, but. Yeah. Yeah. What did y'all think of the pitch? The story a little bit, picture of the Duncans, a video, walking through assets a little bit, but still like not too long. How did that feel? Way better. better. Yeah. I agree. I thought it was way better showing the value of what they get. I loved the um, video of Kirk talking. I thought that was powerful. I don't think, at least we haven't done it at any that I've showed up for before. No. Uh, so I thought that that was really cool to like play a client video. I think we should do that every time. I think it's more powerful than just seeing a screenshot on the screen. Yeah. Agreed. Like the video and the face and the voice. So I really liked that. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Last thing. Yes. But uh, it might be nice to talk a lot. Um, a tiny bit, maybe a sentence or two on the part one marketing plan. Or maybe I was dealing with clients and I missed oh, it. Oh, vision offer. But like doing the offer, the yeah. avatar, because yeah. especially the offer, like with this going on. Hey, you have one of our offers. 
Right. Adding new tiers is super easy once you get your messaging right, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, that's good. Cool. One last thing. That covers my notes. notes. Cool. All right. Good deal. Appreciate cool, you. Cool. This is good. We did an hour, nine minutes, 10 minutes or something, I want to say, uh, by the time. Mm -hmm. So just a tad longer, but we're getting getting the reasonable range, and that's good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Appreciate y'all. See you soon. See you next week. Shop Thanks. Talk attendees. We're talking about creating an